Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are painting marble bases. For this technique, you can either use rattle cans or an airbrush. Right now, it's super hot in California, so I'll be inside using the airbrush. But I'm going to go over the rattle can method, and I'll have links to the spray can colors that I used in the description down below. So let's go ahead and get started. For today's project, I'll be using a pre-made base, but you can create tiled bases with little plastic hard squares, but today we're focusing on the painting aspect. This base came from Dragonforge Design. They're a cool website that makes resin bases in a ton of different styles. I'm using the Ancient Ruins base, and the nice thing about this site is they make more than just one set of sizes. So if you want to do a whole army, you won't be repeating the same five base designs over and over. They have a lot of cool things like these Egyptian ruins. If you want to do something like Tomb Kings or Thousand Suns, these would be perfect. They also have things like these cool trench board bases. So if you wanted to go Astra Militarum, they'd look great. And if you're listening Dragonforge design, you should really promote these because Death Korra Krieg is so hot right now. Okay, so let's get painting. The base has been primed black, and the first color we're going to use is Vallejo's Scurvy Green. Again, the spray paint equivalent is in the description below. With our green, we're going to give the base a really light coat of paint. Some of the black should still be showing through. Then what we're going to do is, with our airbrush or our spray can, is add a little bit more paint to make some small areas of the base slightly brighter green. You're going to have less control with the rattle can, so some fast swiping motions while spraying helps. As you can see, the base isn't a uniform green, and that's exactly what we want. Just keep adding some more paint to the bright spots until you have a nice contrast between the dark and the bright green. Once your paint is dried, go ahead and give it a clear coat. You can do this with an airbrush or a rattle can. If you did the green with a spray can though, you can actually skip this step as your paint isn't as fragile as the airbrush paint. Once the clear coat is dried, you're going to mask it with a baby wipe. I use this Tippy Toes brand, but I know other brands will work just fine. I rinse them off to get any chemicals off and hang them out to dry, usually overnight. Once the baby wipe is dry, you have to stretch out the weave of the fabric to help create the marble pattern. Now you don't want to rip it, so take your time and slowly create openings in the fabric. The more you stretch it, the less intense your pattern will be. Here's an example of it being stretched a lot, and one of it being not stretched as much. It's up to you how you want your bases to look, but I think a good mix of both throughout your army would look great. And this is what it looks like when the baby wipe is all stretched out. And with that stretched out baby wipe, you're going to go ahead and wrap it over the base. Make sure to twist it around the back super snug because you don't want it moving around when you paint it. You can secure it in the back with tape or a rubber band or a twist tie if needed. The first coat we're going to spray on is Vallejo Cold Gray. Again, the spray can equivalent is down in the description below. Go ahead and spray this over the entire base in really light coats. Remember, the baby wipe is acting as a stencil, and with any stencil, you want to do light coats so you don't flood the stencil. If doing this with a spray can, just do quick swipes of paint and don't get too close to the base. Once the paint has been given a little bit of time to dry, we're going to move on to Vallejo Ghost Gray, which is a super light gray. It's almost white. Again, whether using the airbrush or the spray can, we're going to do very light coats, and as we did with the green, we're going to build up some spots more than others. The variance in shades really adds to the randomness of the marble, so make sure just to add a little extra touches in random spots. After giving it time to completely dry, go ahead and unwrap your base. You may notice that after unwrapping it, you have some small hairs still stuck into the paint, but don't worry about those. Just go ahead and remove them with some tweezers. They're not a big deal.
If you just wanted to see how to do that effect, you're done. But I'm going to complete this base, so keep following if you want to see that. First, we're going to hit all the dirt with Scorched Brown. Again, just go ahead and cover all the dirt areas with two thin coats of Scorched Brown. Once the Scorch Brown has dried, we're going to go ahead and give the dirt and all the cracks between the tiles a wash of Agrax Earthshade. If we want the tiles to look a little more pristine, then go for something like a Nuln Oil in the cracks. With our wash dry, we're going to use Vallejo Khaki to do a light dry brush over all the dirt. Don't worry if a little bit of this khaki gets on the side of the broken marble, it's just going to help sell the effect that it's worn and broken. After that, we're going to do one more light dry brush, this time with Vallejo Stonewall Gray. This is going to add some gray to the dirt and it's going to make it look like small pieces of marble have broken off. And lastly, and a totally optional step, is to use some weathering pigments. For this, I'm using Light Slay Gray and Light Sienna. You may have seen me use these before. They're kind of like powder cheating for bases, so I really like using them. With a dry brush, or any brush you don't intend to use for paint, go ahead and slather it on all over the dirt and into the areas with the cracks. I know it looks like I'm putting on a lot, but as you'll see, when I blow off the excess, it's completely fine. Now with the light slay gray, do the same thing, but just focus on the edge where the marble meets the dirt. This is going to help sell the idea that the marble is crumbling. Now you have to set weathering pigments or eventually they'll just come off. You can mist them with any kind of varnish, but you want to make sure you do it very lightly as to not blow it away. What Vallejo recommends is to use airbrush thinner. You simply mist it on the model by flicking it from a dry brush. This method actually works really well, and I do recommend it. Okay guys, and here's what it looks like completely done. And here's one with a model on it. The one with the model was actually done with the spray can method, but at the time of making this video, it's just way too hot outside for me to want to film out there. I hope this video helped you guys in some way. These things would look great with Custodes, Sisters of Silence, Stormcast Eternal, Sisters of Battle. But what I'd actually like to see is someone make a really posh orc army. A man can dream. But please like and subscribe if this helped you. And as always, thank you for your time and take care.